Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian and today I'm going to be taking you through the new Power Automate designer and comparing it to the classic designer. So the new designer has an updated UI and it's more focused around building apps using AI with Copilot. So let's go in and have a look. So this is what the new designer looks like. But to start with, I'm actually going to show you how you can change back to the classic designer. So because the new designer is still very new, sometimes things don't render properly on the page or sometimes things load a bit funny and they're blocking what you need to get to. And also sometimes there may not be the functionality that you need in the new designer. So you can actually really easily swap back to the old designer in two ways. The first way is this toggle up here, which allows you to just click and then save and switch. However, in my experience, sometimes when you use the toggle to move back, it doesn't actually load. So when you click either switch without saving or save and switch, it actually just loads and doesn't do anything. So a way to get around this, if this is happening for you, is you need to actually kind of hard code it to go to the old designer. You just need to come up to the URL. And when it says v3 equals true, you just need to change this to v3 equals false. And that will ensure that you get sent to the old designer. Just make sure you save before doing so or you'll lose your work. I think one of the most obvious features within the new designer is the inbuilt copilot functionality. And that's because the new designer is focusing on building flows using AI. So the Copilot window opens on the right hand side. You can close it if you don't want it or you can open it. But it, the point is it's built in functionality. So you can start to use Copilot while you're there building your flows. You can ask Copilot to add an action to the flow, to explain what an action does and to add a condition to the flow. So just to show you what kind of prompts you can ask, I'm just going to say what does get items do? And you can see it's come back to say what the SharePoint get items action does. So that's how you can start to use AI with Copilot to start to help build your flows quicker and even build your flows from scratch. So we can see that the UI has changed on the new designer and actually there's quite a lot of new navigation features here that we didn't have before. So firstly is that you can actually drag and drop around your designer, just making that navigation easier. Whereas before, in the classic designer, you just had to use the scroll bars to scroll up and down or left and right. So it just makes it a bit easier to navigate through your flow. Down here in the left hand corner, we also have the navigation menu. Now, where I've mentioned before that things don't always render correctly or where they should be with the new designer, this is a really good example of this because as we can see, this is hidden behind this left hand side menu. Now, I don't know if this renders like this for everyone, but for me, every time I go into the new designer, it does hide the navigation icons. However, they still work, but it's obviously uh, not as clean as a UI and it's not loading as it should. So as you do use the new designer, there may be just little things like that that you pick up on as you start to get used to it and start to build your flows. So coming back to what the navigation items actually do, we can zoom in. We can zoom out, we can fit the flow to view. We can actually now search straight for an action. So if you're looking for a specific action where maybe you need to edit an expression or edit the dynamic content, you can either search for it or select it from the options available and it will then take you to that said action, saving time having to look for it yourself. And lastly, we also have this map view here, again, just helping you navigate around your flow. And actually, these actions are very similar to the navigation actions that we had in the Power Virtual Agents designer. The way that actions are dealt with in the new designer is different as well. So within the new designer, when you click on an action, it pops open this left hand side navigation pane. Whereas in the classic designer, when you clicked on an action, it would just open up from within the designer and just make the action box bigger. So in this left hand navigation pane, this is where we deal with parameters and where we deal with settings. So settings before were dealt with when you clicked on the ellipsis of the old designer box and then you could get to settings there. Now it's all handled in this left hand side menu. So one of the newer features when it comes to actions is this advanced parameters area here. 
So in the old designer, when you click to show advanced parameters, it would open up all the parameters available for that action, even if you didn't need them all. So it was using kind of that all or nothing approach. Whereas now you can actually come through and only select the parameters that you actually want to input data for. And you can even search for the parameters too. It just makes it a bit cleaner and a bit easier when it deals with using data, especially if you're using, say, a SharePoint list or a data first table that has lots of different columns. The way that you input formulas and expressions has also slightly changed as well with the new designer. So I'm just going to flip over to this compose action here for, to, so we can put in some inputs. So there is a new keyboard shortcut. If you do the forward slash, it brings up the menu here, right where you're typing. So you can then go ahead and click on whatever you may need to use. Alternatively, there are these buttons as well that are always there at the end of the text box. So you can either select them. And I think this works a lot better than in the old designer. Because in the old designer, say if you were inputting inputs for a variable or inputting an array item that used a lot of dynamic content. Sometimes I found when, you know, when you would just click onto the box and the box would pop up on the right hand side, it didn't always pop up. Or if I was trying to add an expression, it didn't recognize that it was for kind of a new space and not the last expression that I added, which was very frustrating sometimes. The run after settings are also handled under the settings area in the left hand navigation menu. So all of the run after settings are the same options. However, now if you start to add run after settings, if we look here actually in the flowchart, we can see that we've got these different colored dots which represent what the run after settings are. Now, this is a really nice piece of UI because when you're first looking for a flow or if you're just looking through to kind of see what's going on. You can actually now specifically see what the run after settings are. Whereas before, if you added any run after settings, they would just show as that red dotted arrow and it didn't actually determine whether it was failed, skipped or timed out. So I think that's a nice new piece of functionality that's been added. The way you deal with notes as well has also changed. So now to add notes, you click on the ellipsis here and click add a note and then you just add it in the same way as before. Once you've added in a note, if we come to the designer, we can see that the note has been added because you get the little text box icon in that bottom right hand corner. To view a note, you can actually hover over the icon and it will show in that little pop up there. Or if you, if I just close this, or if you click on the icon and open up the action, it will appear here. Now this is different to the old designer, where in the old designer, when you added a note, if the action box was closed, you wouldn't actually know that a note had been added until you opened up the box and then saw the note in there. So I think that's a bit nice because as you, again, as you're just reading through a flow, you can automatically see and know when there is an action that's been added. Another nice piece of functionality is that we have finally had an upgrade for the expression box. So the expression box is now a lot bigger than before. So before it was only one line. Now we've got a multi-line expression box, meaning that you can actually see what formulas you are typing in and see the complete formula so that you can identify if there's any missing commas or missing brackets a lot easier than having to copy and paste the formula and put it into notes to see what's going on. We've also got a new piece of functionality here, being able to paste the last used expression. So if you're using quite a repetitive expression and you're using it in quite a lot of places, it just makes it quicker and easier to paste it in. And you can even expand this out even further. So you have a bigger box to start with and then an even bigger box if you need it, if you're writing your really long expressions, which I think is just a really nice upgrade from before. Copying and pasting of actions has also finally come out of preview with the new designer. So this functionality was available in the old designer, however, it always stayed within preview. But now it's come out of preview, it's going to work a lot smoother, it's just gonna work a lot nicer and be a lot more reliable. So to copy and paste an action now, you just need to right click, copy action, press the plus wherever you want to add it, and then paste. And it's just really quick, simple and easy. And I feel like this is a lot nicer than the old designer because I found with the old designer if you copied and pasted a lot of the actions they stay saved to the clipboard 
So you press copy to my clipboard. And if you have a lot of copied actions there, I found it made the flow run very slow. Or not even the flow run slow, the editing of the flow, the web page run really slow. And I always found myself having to do a save and refresh to remove the items in the clipboard because it was just so slow to do anything in the editor. The action search has had an upgrade as well for when you need to add new actions into your flow. So now it pops up in this nice big window again on that left hand navigation pane. So the items that we see automatically on the pane before you do any searching, these are the most popular connectors. So these aren't actions, these are connectors. And if you need to see the actions within them, you just click through and all of the actions are there organized in alphabetical order, just making it really nice and easy to see what's going on. And actually the UI for this is so much better now that it's in a bigger box because it's really easier and clearer to see what actions are there and you can see more actions in one go as well rather than in the small little scroll box we had before. We also have this runtime filter now so rather than it always being there and you selecting the options at the top, this is now a drop down filter where you just can filter through your standard and premium connectors. And I think the search as well has also been improved and works a lot better than before. So we can see if you type in populate, you get your actions grouped by connector. And it's just really a lot clearer to see what's going on. And also we have a new filter here for action type. So this would be for more if you were starting off flow from scratch. You can then filter whether it's an action or a trigger condition. Now, unfortunately, there are some known limitations with the new designer, which hopefully is only because it's new and hopefully the functionalities will be addressed by Microsoft for future releases. So the first functionality is that there is no format by example options within the new designer, which is a shame as format by example is a relatively new feature within Power Automate. But unfortunately, it just hasn't been brought across to the new designer yet. So hopefully the development team at Microsoft will bring this across. But if you do need to use format by example, you can switch back to the classic designer at any time. The second limitations are within the Outlook connector. And the first one here is when you are typing in an email either to from CC, BCC, is that when you start to type it out, the search throughout your organization to kind of auto bring back those emails. So in the old designer, when you search in a name, so the name I'm logged in with is service at Encodium, it would bring up my Outlook profile, and then you can click that and the email will automatically be populated. Unfortunately, this search doesn't work. So if you're not using dynamic content for your emails, you have to either manually type or go and copy and paste the email in to here. It's not the end of the world, there is a workaround. However, if you do start typing or copying and pasting your emails, that does introduce some room for error. The second limitation within the Outlook connector is actually within the body of the email. So the body of the text now can no longer be edited using the HTML code. In the old designer, up in these options here, you could switch to the HTML code view. However, in the new designer, you're limited to the styling options available here. But luckily, it is easy to change back to the classic designer if you do need to go in and edit the HTML code for your emails. Another limitation is that in this top bar here, we no longer have an undo or a redo button. Now, this may be because versioning is coming to Power Automate in the future. However, we don't know when and not much has been announced about it yet, which suggests that it's still kind of in its early days. But maybe this is why the development team didn't feel the need to bring the undo and the redo buttons across, which is, again, isn't the end of the world. If you make a mistake in your flow, you can delete it and try and go back to what it was. But I know I did use the undo button quite a bit sometimes. So hopefully there will be some form of undo or redo or versioning brought across soon. There's also no comments area here as well. So you now can't leave comments on the flow like you did before. So hopefully again, this functionality may be coming back. It may not be, but just one thing to note when using the new designer. And the last limitation I'm going to address today is that actually not all flows can even use the new designer. So some existing flows that you may have 
You may see this yellow ribbon up the top saying that AI powering can't be used for the flow yet. And there's a few different reasons that this could be. So to see why you can just click here. And in this example, it's because it uses a connection instead of a connection reference while it's inside of a solution. So your flows that are inside of solutions are likely to, if the connection reference isn't set, see this message. Other reasons I've seen this message is just because that the flow, the design of the flow just can't be used within the new designer. And another message that I've come across when I've been told I can't use the new designer is because it's using a shared connection within the flow somewhere. So there may be more reasons than this. If you have seen any more reasons, please leave a comment below because I'd love to know what they are. But unfortunately, not all your flows are ready for the new designer yet. But the yet does suggest that in the future, they will be. So I guess we just have to wait and see. So hopefully this video has been useful in showing you what new features are available with the new designer and where the limitations lie as well so that you can best prepare and decide when you're going to be using the new designer to the classic designer in Power Automate. As mentioned throughout the video, the new designer is very new, so it's not going to be completely perfect yet, as Microsoft are asking for our comments and feedback for the designer as you go through and use it. So we're excited to see what happens to this designer in the future, what new features become available, and of course, what new AI features are going to start to be brought into Power Automate on top of what we already have. So as always, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.